Hello everyone, Shaman Cena here, and today I'm showing you Glass Top Off. It is a web application honeypot that uh, I run. You've heard me talk about honeypots before in my previous videos, and how I run some SSH honeypots and stuff like that to get um, to get analytics of what's going on around the web and what kind of attacks we're seeing. Um, in SSH's case, we can collect data like what's the most common username and password combo. Um, uh, what IPs are so we can better uh, generate firewall rules stuff like that and um, a web honeypot is just that it's the same thing however um, the web honeypot is a lot more interesting uh, so this particular honeypot um, glass up off I, I know I butcher the name so if someone could tell me <laughs> if that's how I pronounce if that's the proper pronouncing that uh, that'd be great I've used this honeypot for a while and I really like it it's really lightweight very easy to set up um, but in uh, majority majority of the time, almost all the honeypots are pretty simple to set up. Um, what's interesting about this is that it actually emulates certain more sophisticated attacks. Like SSH, what we're going to find is that someone will break in, run a couple of commands, and um, and uh, we'll get to see that. And that's great. I mean, that way we can better harden our operating systems and see what happens when these scripts hit our servers. Um, with the web honeypot, we're going to get even more sophisticated attacks because SSH, once you're broken in to the operating system and you assume your root, then you're going to run a whole bunch of stuff. But it is harder to to break into a web server via a website um, because you know most of the time they're pretty secure. Um, most of the time you're looking for a bug or, or um, a flaw in a code and stuff like that so it can take considerably longer and um, uh, and the thing is is that you're going to see more and more attacks uh, based on that um, because they're easier script and uh, and stuff like that well what glass hub off does is that it emulates all of these vulnerabilities so um, there's things like SQL injection and HTML injection and stuff like that uh, it will respond to and uh, the attackers under the impression that we have a very vulnerable web server. So I already have it installed. Um, if you're interested in seeing an install, um, just let me know and uh, I will uh, I'll make uh, a video on how to do that. Um, you, if you just follow the install guide that's actually on their GitHub, which I'll put in the description, um, you um, you actually just have like you know for instance if you click on the Ubuntu, just following this guide is pretty much all you need. Now I will show you a couple key files and where this will be installed. So it's usually installed in the OPT directory, although you can put it anywhere you want. Okay, and now um, so it's usually slash OPT slash my honeypot unless you renamed it now there's uh, there's a couple of files here so the one of the main files is a configuration file so it's a glass top off um, configuration file now uh, this will just have our fake web server and um, it is uh, you know you got to put in your host and the port you want to listen to uh, leave this to nobody that way if someone does compromise the web server they go nowhere okay. and then there's various options you know for logging and stuff I encourage you to uh, to explore some of this uh, you can write down to the SMT uh, sorry to the um, banner so if someone does a banner grab they'll see Apache they'll believe it's Apache okay. you even get uh, I mean you can set up mail notifications and the list goes on and on now, aside from that, uh, they do have uh, like a base um, base website that it comes with. So if you go to the data slash templates directory, there's uh, some files here, base.html, base. Um, I, I've been fooling around with the code, so uh, this is the original one, and then index.html. So um, to start the to start the honeypot, all you gotta do is uh, run the start script, 
and the operating system starts uh, the the script and now you get this site quote unquote that says this is a test okay now you're going to see the usual yep there's a, re a request for a get uh, you know we, we got this and um, you know that's just regular website activity what happens if I run something like Nikto which have you seen my previous video <coughs> is a um, vulnerability checker app so Nikto is gonna run a scan for vulnerabilities on the server and as you can see it's gonna go nuts because the web server um, is emulating all of these vulnerabilities um, and I can assure you that on the one thing you will notice if you run a script like this or if you run a, like a vulnerability app and you see all of these vulnerabilities chances are something is not right uh, that's one way some some attackers notice a, um, a honeypot um, I mean, some some of this stuff, even on a default install of Apache, uh, wouldn't have this many vulnerabilities. So, for instance, it's emulating that it has PHP MyAdmin installed, but PHP MyAdmin is not installed. It just throws a bunch of stuff, um, saying that there's all these vulnerabilities. And now the list goes on and on, and. Um, if we go back to our server, we'll see all of the activity Nikto is doing against the server. Okay, so unlike Kippo and the SSH honeypots and the other honeypots uh, I've, I've used, um, this, uh, this honeypot does not have a web front end. So there's no like analytic type page and stuff. You can write one. And I'm pretty sure it'd be pretty simple. I mean, because you can just put all this stuff into like an SQL database. And I believe there's actually an option to enable um, um, MongoDB or uh, MySQL and then just put all this info there. Okay, so that's pretty much pretty much a gist of it. Um, now, if you have any questions or comments about this video or any other videos, please leave them in the uh, comment section below. Um, if you want, you can visit my website. Uh, that's shawmancini.com. And if you have any other questions or comments and you want to email me, my email is just shawmancini2010 at gmail.com. Uh, and I hope this video was helpful to you and see you next time.